Hello, all you lovely Jewish women. I have never been so glad and proud to be a Jewish woman as I am today among all of you. It's a great honor you are giving me today, and I'm quite touched by it. I'm not sure why I am celebrated by you. Is it because I'm a Jewish woman? Is it because I am old? Sort of Long in the tooth. <laughs> Today is the 10th of March. In two months, on May 10th, I'll have a birthday. I'll be 102. How did I get to be so old? I don't know. But I'll tell you something. I like it. <laughs> I absolutely like it being this old, and I'll tell you why. All my life, I've had to do something that I had to do. I had to study, I had to go to school, I had to have a job, I had to teach, I had to marry, have children, work. For the first time, in a hundred one <laughs> years, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> what a wonderful, wonderful feeling. A liberating feeling. I can say when I'm asked to do something, no thank you. Why not? I'm a hundred one. <laughs> what a great excuse. <laughs> Provided, of course, one is healthy. And that's a huge proviso. And I have been fortunate. I'm aware of the fact that I don't have much time. My future has become my past. And so my priorities are different. I value time. What's important to me now is my family, is doing what I enjoy to do, even if it's nothing. What a wonderful feeling it is to do nothing. But I have been busy. As you will see later, I've been busy translating all my books into digital books. And they're here today. I'll be signing them. But besides being old, I like that word, old, not senior. That's a high school prom word. <laughs> not older. Older than whom? Old. A very honorable word. I like it, and I wish all of you would have reached this ripe age. 
as I said, provided you're healthy. That's a huge proviso. Because I'm aware of the harsh realities. I'm aware of the problems in the marketplace. I'm aware of the premium on youth. But old age has its huge advantages. I remember the Browning line. Grow old along with me. The best is yet to be. The last of love for which the first is made. I always thought, what a ridiculous <laughs> sentence when I was young, I realized how true it is. All the struggles and problems of youth are behind one. Children are grown and on their own. And for the first time, one has opportunities to do what one wants but not what one is supposed to do. So I'm enjoying this, and I'm enjoying particularly being with you today. Aging is a matter of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter, <laughs> and I don't mind. I tell my age, and it's a sort of open sesame to how kind people are. When I cross the street, they come to help me. When I'm looking for a place to sit, they offer me a seat. I wish all of you will reach this age, then you will understand what I am saying. As far as my books are concerned, which are all here today, and I will be signing them later, for the first time in my life, I have collected my short stories. Actually, my novels are in a way short stories. Up the down staircase, love, etc. Up the down staircase, which made my success, was an accident. I had published short stories in national magazines. One of them was a little three-page story called From a Teacher's Waste Basket, in which I had jotted down some scraps of paper which juxtaposed together showed a picture of waste of lack of communication, of discipline problems, of loneliness. And that was published. Prentice Hall, the publisher, had an editor who recognized something in that little three and a half page story, called me to have lunch and asked me to expand it into a book. I said, oh, no, no, no. I've never written a novel. I'm a teacher of English. I used to say it with great pride. And a short story writer. But they gave me an advance, which I immediately spent. I needed to spend it. I didn't have a penny. I had left my husband. 
I had no savings. I spent the advance. What could I do? I had to write a book. <laughs> it was guilt that was my motivating factor. And I was very surprised when I discovered that as soon as the book was published, it became a national bestseller. And it's still alive. And it is still very significant today. Well, what used to be a mischievous pet spitball is now a rebellious rock. What used to be stealing chalk is now robbery at night point. What used to be infractions like chewing gum in class, smoking in the laboratory, become crimes that our children commit. I think the difference has to do with the drunk culture up the down staircase had no drug problems, at least not many. It was a straw in the wind, and the wind is now a hurricane. As soon as the book was published, I became known as the author of and I found myself known, especially by teachers all over the country who said, how did you know? You described my class, my student, my problem. And I treasure all the letters that they sent me. It was bound to become a book And two moving picture companies bargained for it. 20th Century Fox and uh, Warner Brothers. And Warner Brothers won. I was the technical consultant that meant they let me hang around. They paid me. They didn't listen to a word I said. <laughs> they transformed a high school in Manhattan, textile high school, annex for boys on 10th Avenue, into the school I described in Staircase. Inside, they had names of the teachers I invented. Inside, they had classes and the numbers of the rooms I invented. And I remember seeing all those people scurrying around, actors, directors, script girls, makeup people, all of them working, trying. Because one day, I had sat down at my typewriter and put a blank piece of paper into it. And that was the beginning. And so many of us who have thoughts about expressing something that you feel, about possibly writing it, Perhaps you take notes and you leave them around. Perhaps you jot down ideas. Those may be the seeds from which would grow a creative work of art. I have written another novel, 
love, etc., which has to do with us grown-ups. And I like it very much. It's a very good book. I believe that's out here today, too, as well as two volumes of my short stories. Some had appeared in magazines throughout the years. I never collected them in one volume. And my nonfiction pieces, random thoughts and observations called this and that. I believe all four books are here today. This and that, love, etc. La Tigresse, which is my short story volume, and Up the Down Staircase. And I believe that they'll be available today after my talk. I was given five to seven minutes <laughs> in which to talk. I remember asking a class to write about a hundred words so I could tell what their weaknesses were in English. One boy wrote a few lines, 85 words so far, need 15 more. I don't need 15 more. I think that I communicated with you. And if I talked for five to seven minutes, I don't know if I did. If I talked an extra half a minute, I hope you will produce. I thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, uh.